The parables of Jesus about the kingdom of God have uh, continued to fascinate people for over 2,000 years. And I must admit that as I continue to read the same stories from the Gospels over and over again for many years, it seems that they are like wine, really, and violin and motorcycles. They get better as they get older. The longer we sit with them, the longer we listen to them, and the more life experience we have, it seems that there is more meaning we're able to uncover. At least I have found that to be the case. And so we have here this parable about the kingdom of God, which is a mysterious parable about this landowner who goes out and invites people to come in and work. And what's interesting is that at the end, at the end, he says to the laborers, are you envious because I am generous? You know, he pays everyone the same. And it's interesting that they wouldn't be envious They wouldn't have a problem with the generosity of the landowner if they were the recipients of the extra little bit of money. Isn't that the case? When we get something on sale, we don't complain. Or when we get a raise, we don't complain. It's only when something passes us by and we feel like we missed out. Maybe someone else was more able to receive something. And so Jesus here presents to us the kingdom of God, which is the great equalizer for all of us. What is my purpose in life? It is to go into the vineyard of the Lord and to work. But what is this work that we are called to do? I think there are many proposals that are being offered today about this meaning of life. I was watching a YouTube channel. One of the most popular podcasters today is a man by the name of Joe Rogan, an ex-Catholic, unfortunately ex-Catholic, but still a man who is willing to listen, I think. It's interesting that He was asking this kind of question. What is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? And you know what's interesting is everyone seems to have an answer to this question. And yet, none of us really are supposed to have an answer. How do I know? Because this is precisely what the scriptures tell us. Today's first reading from the prophet Isaiah is one of my favorite readings of the Old Testament. And so you will allow me, I hope you will allow me, to focus on this reading a little bit in looking at the purpose of life. What am I called to do? What am I called to do with my life? And this is what God says through Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Now think about this. The purpose of life is not to find God, but to seek God. What's the difference? The difference is that in finding, we have completed our task. We have conquered something. We have achieved something. But in seeking, we take the right place in our relationship with God. And Isaiah continues, he says, For my ways are not the same as your ways. What does that mean? That means that I will never know certain things. But I must continue to seek. 
one of the most, princi- most foundational principles and virtues in our life as Christians is the virtue of humility. And humility allows us to do just what God says through Isaiah, to seek. Because to seek is to accept in humility that I still haven't found, as the song says, what I'm looking for. I still haven't conquered what I'm supposed to conquer. I still haven't forgiven fully. I still haven't loved perfectly. Think about this in your own relationships as parents, as children, as grandparents, husbands and wives. Your job is to continue, to continue to love because you haven't fully loved yet. That's our human condition. God's ways are not the same as our ways. Think how the world would change if we adopted this ancient principle, which even ancient philosophers accepted, that we are all but students. The approach of a student is to admit that he or she doesn't know yet. And so you sit in the classroom with an open mind, open ears, open heart, interested to hear something that you do not yet know. But the challenge that we all struggle with, which comes through pride, is that too often we see ourselves as teachers rather than students, don't we? We want others to listen to us. Oh, if everyone saw the world the way I do, if everyone had the same political ideas as I do, then I could teach everyone everything they need to know. But I have to remember that I don't know everything. Why? Because I am not God. Our purpose in life is to continue to humbly seek God, to learn from God, to listen over and over again to the same teachings, the same stories, the same parables, because we can never master them. We can never exhaust them. I'm a great fan of music, and Ray Charles A wonderful musician before his death was sitting at a piano, just like this one. And he was being interviewed as he was answering questions and improvising on the keys of the piano. And he said to the interviewer, he said, you still don't understand. This piano will always have more in it than I'm able to get out of it. Now that's a mature musician. The more we know, the more there is to know. The more we master something, the greater the depth and mystery of that very thing. And I think that's why the call and purpose of every Christian, every person, is to continue to seek the Lord. Only he knows, only he can continue to deepen our love, deepen our understanding. The minute we say we know it, we have failed in our purpose in life. And so my prayer for you, dear brothers and sisters, for myself as well, is to never lose that sense of wonder that spirit of humility in saying, yes, I know some things, but there's more I don't know than I know. But the good news is I continue to seek 
I continue to listen. I continue to sit with God who can teach me all things. Amen? Amen.